Welcome to a video that's going to explain the sequence function. Now that's one of the new dynamic array functions and it's, in my opinion, the best one because of the versatility of it. So it's so simple and yet you can do such amazing things with it. Let's start with what does it do? So you should think of the sequence function as actually the command home fill and serious built into a function kind of thing right whenever you wanted to create a sequence of numbers no pun intended uh, this is the command that you would use right you would say i want a sequence in rows i want it to be linear i want it to start with one and go by one and end at ten well, now you can do the same things by just saying equals sequence of 10. And that's it, right? It's a dynamic array formula. It spills. And as you can see, when I was looking at the arguments of the function, you only need the first one. For the function to work, it only needs the first one. But you have optional arguments, which are you can go rows and columns. So you can say, I need a sequence that will go 10 rows, three columns. And you can just finish there, right? And because you didn't supply the start and step, the start will be one and step will be one, right? Like this. Now, obviously this cell has been formatted at some point. Bad, bad cell, there you go. So this, you can see that now it created a sequence of 10 rows, three columns. Now, the only thing that kind of flips people here is, oh, but it went by row. So it went one, two, three, four, five, six, which kind of, you know, not kind of, it totally makes sense. And yet sometimes people will go, well, I would much rather see this by columns. So one, two, three, four, five, and then onwards. And you can easily do that by using some trickery. First of all, I'm going to say, I only need three rows and 10 columns, which sounds weird, right? But then I'm going to say, and then when you get that, I want you to transpose it. So what I'm going to get is exactly what I need. One, two, three, four, five, six, ten, 10, and then 11 and so on, right? And here we get to where the sequence functions function really shines. And that's when you combine it with other functions. So the sequence function by itself may not, you know, appear such a great thing, but when you combine it with other functions, it can do wonders. Let me show you this one just to start things off. So let's create a sequence, right? And I want the sequence to be 10 rows, a single column. So I can omit that and it will be a single column or I could write the one. It doesn't matter. The start should be today and step. I'm just going to omit that and it's going to be one, right? So it's going to go each day. And there you go. If I format those as dates, here's what I got. Now that should strike you as brilliant. But then this was actually using today within the sequence as a start. But I could also think about it the other way. I could say, well, why don't you create a date for me? Now the year, let's just go with 2021. I could also go with, you know, year from today. Now the month, will be a sequence function of, let's say, 15 or 18. So a year and a half, right? And then just give me the first in the month. Now let's format all of those as dates. And that 
it's brilliant, right? But usually, usually, I would use this in a slightly different setting. And what I would do is I would do this. I would go equals sequence. Now, I want just the one row, but I do want multiple columns, right? So the columns that I need, I'm going to go with month of today, right? So today is the first August 1st. So this is going to return eight, right? So at this point, I'm going to get one to eight, which doesn't really do much, but now I'm going to change it a bit. I'm going to say, well, and use that as part of the date function, okay? So the date function, the year is 2021. Use these months, so all of the months from one to eight, but by column, and then give me one as the final one. I get these dates, right? So let me just format them as dates so you'll see it immediately. Again, okay but not what i'm quite looking for but i could say and i want you to format or sorry for the minute there i was thought i was in dax i want you to use text on this and i want you to format it as mmm not the candy but the month name short there you go now the cool thing about it is this is a dynamic table when September rolls along, September will appear here, right? And if I add an extra M there, oh, I was in the wrong cell, sorry. If I add an extra M there, what I get is something like this, the entire name, right? So this, just brilliant. Now let's do another one. And let's show about three things with this. So first I'm gonna do a rand array. And the rand array is gonna have, let's say five rows five columns and it's gonna give me numbers from ranging from a hundred to a ten thousand and they will be integers like this so no decimals again the format is all over the place let's put it in general here like this so now i have this now i want to list those numbers from largest to smallest but in a single column okay right? oh yeah so we're gonna do sequence and i need a sequence of one two how many well i know it's 25 but i'll just do a count of as much numbers as we have in this range Right, so this will give me sort of a uh, well, let's just look at what I get. Right, so I get a list of numbers from 1 to 25, but now I'm going to use that with another function called large. Right, so if I just do and now give me large of this whole area by using that sequence as which number I want. And there you go. Those are numbers up here sorted. It's just brilliant, brilliant, right? Um, so the sequence function, great. And now let me show you a fun example. Okay, so this example um, this data set is actually from a conference in bulgaria where ken pulse and i did a session i think it was on excel and power bi better together kind of story um, and this was the data set that we used so what ken did he used power query to transform this into a table because this is a table right the seven Seven is the magic number here. So every seven cells is actually a single row. So this is my header row. This is my first row of data and so on and so on. Now what I would want to do is I would want to transform this into a 
table, right? And how am I going to do this? Well, the title says it all. I'm going to use the sequence function. Well, first I'm going to use the index function. And the array that I'm going to use will be all of these cells. So use all of these cells. And now which value from that range do I want? Well, if I would have said five, I would just get the fifth value. But what I want is a sequence. And if I just went 500, I would just get the first 500 still in a single column. But sequence can go wide, right? So I'll say, give me a hundred rows, but also give me seven columns. Now that's, that's cool, right? And then I'm just going to omit the start and the step because if I omit them, it's one and one. And that, that's exactly what I want, right? So start with one and the step is one. So give me one, two, three, four, five. And it's going to give me those by row. So the first value from that range is going to go to first cell in the first row. The second value is going to go into the second cell in the first row and so on and so on. And the eighth value is going to go in row two, first column. So let's just look at how that works. This is what I get. And this has got to be one of the most brilliant things you've ever seen in Excel. Or at least top 10. That's the power of the sequence function. That's the power of dynamic arrays. This Excel has changed with dynamic arrays. And the sequence function is one that you need in your tool belt. Um, let me just give you a... So let's call this a short uh, kind of imagine if ending to this video. Um, imagine you're doing a simulation, right? And your simulation would be, and let's just, you know, let's go you're doing a payment of, of a loan and you're thinking, should I repay it in one year, two year, three years, and so on. So usually those go per month, right? So you have your monthly rate and what i will do is i will mark this cell down because i usually can't find it after i create it and i will create a data validation cell where i will say this is a list of values and it can be 12 it can be 24 it can be 36 or it can be 48 right and then just for the sake of it let's go with 60. okay so those are the numbers I have. And now down here where I'm simulating and doing my calculation, I'm going to go sequence of, well, this, right? And now I have my 12. But now I can say, well, now I need 24. There it is. Right? See how brilliant that is? And with this, all the simulation are just so much easier to do. Um, you know, it's just amazing. And let me just, for the sake of, you know, argument, let me put that in like 12 uh, columns for you, just so you'll see it clearly. Um, so we'll go this divided by 12 number of rows, the 12 columns, you need to start with one right? And then wherever that takes you, and the step is also one. I could omit the last two, actually, to be honest. So this would work, right? So now I have 12, 24. If I go 36, I get another one, and so on, right? Of course, usually you would have them as we started out in a single column, and then you could have your formula next to it being dependent on the number. So your model would be dynamic with a single dropdown. That's, the power of that is just amazing, right? We used to do that with conditional formatting and all sorts of tricks, but now it's actually a formula that does that for you. Okay, well, that's all I'm going to tell you about the sequence function. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And um, I'm hoping this gets you extremely excited about dynamic arrays and I'm hoping you start using the sequence function today if you're not using it already.
Okay, well, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.